Welcome back to Just Books, prize-winning journalist Rahul Pandita, well-known for books such as Hello Buster, The Untold Story of India's Maoist Movement is just out with a new book. It's about the flight of Kashmiri pundits from the valley and indeed, as you can tell from his name, he's one. The book is called Our Moon Has Blood Clots. It's a very moving, poignant, deeply felt tale. You were 14 years old a schoolboy in Srinagar when uh, the insurgency blew up in the late 80s, 89, and you describe what the first tremors of it like were, were for your family. Your father uh, worked with the irrigation department, your mother was a health worker, your father had put all his provident fund to build this small house in Srinagar, and suddenly your world, their world, the world of your family and relatives began to fall apart. What was it like as a young man to feel those, that sort of silent growing earthquake? The idea of house has been very important for all Kashmiris. Uh, you know, back then we didn't have any fixed deposits or Indra Vikas Patras or mutual funds. Uh, any middle class Kashmiri uh, would put all his money in a house. So the idea of home was really important for us. And it was really painful uh, leaving everything, you know, our home and hearth uh, back in uh, 1990 when it all began. Uh, it really began from uh, the night of 19 January 1990 um, uh, when uh, people from majority community, ordinary people, uh, assembled in these mosques all across valley um, in that rabid frenzy of Azadi from India, which also meant a lot of anti-pandit uh, slogans coming uh, from the mosque. Uh, you, you, if you, I could quote just one very dangerous, um, uh, uh, you know, slogan uh, which was vented out at us, uh, which in Kashmiri goes, Asigas Pannui Pakistan Bhatta Rusti Bhatnan Sahan, which essentially means that we want our Pakistan without Pandit men, uh, but with their women. So after that, we were left with a choice, uh, but to flee to safety. And the exodus really began uh, from the next morning, 20th January 1990, where brother couldn't tell his brother that he was leaving, a friend couldn't tell his friend he was leaving, a colleague couldn't tell his colleague that he was leaving. Yours and is all both of us, like, a historical forward. story uh, through Kashmir's long and convoluted history of how the two communities have sometimes been very well integrated, but also uh, depending on whether there was Muslim rule or Hindu and Dogra rule, there were reprisals against both the communities. There was always integration given Kashmir's very strong Sufi culture and also a degree of separation. But the first indicators that you describe as a young man, for example, you say your mother came home one day from work and on a bus she had heard a Muslim woman scream at a Pandit woman saying, why is she being allowed? She should be thrown out of the bus. Uh, how did that affect you, those first signs? I think it was, um, uh, you know, we felt very scared, uh, very frightened uh, because of that indi those indicators. We started coming to us really from 86 onwards when these, uh, um, you know, very unfortunate communal rights broke out in uh, Anantanag in South Kashmir, where a lot of Kashmiri pundits, their houses were ransacked, burned. Then the women, killings began. Uh, 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 raped. And the killings began a couple of years uh, uh, later, uh, from 1989 onwards, when Kashmiri pundits became targets of very selective and brutal killing. You know, ordinary people being killed on the roads. Um, you know, now uh, when you go back to that narrative, they say that uh, only those Kashmiri pundits who are with the intelligence agency or with the police or when in the government service were killed. But that's not true. Uh, you know, Kashmiri pundits from all hues, from all jobs were killed. You know, there were shopkeepers, there were doctors, there were nurses, there were teachers, there were professors. All of them, innocent people, uh, brutalized, killed. Uh, you know, women like uh, Girja Tiku gang raped in a moving car and then cut alive on a mechanical saw. So after that brutality, you know, we weren't left with a choice. With the rise of the JKL, uh, with the rise of with the, the JKL, kidnap and release of. Rabbi Rabbi Sayed. Sayed. Yes, that's right. Those days were very dark uh, for us. Um, uh, you, you know, it was like being in a uh, Art Spiegelman uh, graphic no novel called Mouse. You know, where you're startled all the time. You don't know uh, what's going to happen. Uh, whether they'll turn against you, will set your house to fire. Uh,
India's number one news app, just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.